to impeach a president over a fraud that was committed by other people that want to win an election in 2020, which they won't, is incredible. This is the greatest hoax. Now, it's gone on for a long time. We had the Mueller uh, collusion delusion, okay? That went on for years. He can rhyme. It was a particularly agitated, particularly alarming display from President Trump today as the impeachment inquiry closes in. Former CIA Director John Brennan reacted to Trump's press conference on Twitter like this. Press conference with Finnish president shows Donald Trump is a national disgrace who deserves impeachment, conviction and ouster from office. Republicans in Congress must abandon him now if they care about our country and have any hope of salvaging a political future for the GOP. Joining our conversation, former CIA director, now NBC senior national security analyst John Brennan. What did you see when you watched that press conference? I saw a travesty. I saw a national embarrassment and a disgrace. I don't see how anybody could defend his performance at that press conference. I think the Finnish president, just like a lot of other visitors to the White House, comport themselves very professionally and responsibly. And Donald Trump, time after time after time, continues just to show how unfit he is for office and how he continues to just divert the conversation to his political misfortunes. And the questions that he was asked, he just, you know, he doesn't have a response for them, so he'll respond to other questions. So I, I really do think we're seeing Donald Trump being very anxious about a situation. That's why he's lashing out more and more. And so that's why I defy any Republican to look at that press conference today and say, yeah, this is the president of the United States that we're proud of. Well, you know, Tom Bossert, who was Donald Trump's appointee to head uh, his Homeland Security Advisor mm -hmm. in the White House, um, sounded one of the most impassioned alarms from inside the Trump orbit on Sunday when he talked about how the president, you can't penetrate the president with facts, that he would go to the president over and over again on this Ukrainian conspiracy specifically, and the president didn't want to hear any, any facts. How dangerous is that? Very dangerous, because not only is he not hearing it from his White House staff, but he's not hearing it from the National Security Council team, the intelligence community. He's just continuing to go by his gut or his instinct. As he says he's the stable genius. Without the input on so many of these important national security issues from the professionals who really can tee up options for our country to be able to pursue. So the fact that he is just ignoring all advice, professional advice, and doing what he thinks is best for his personal political purposes, I think that just shows how what's a, what a bad situation we're in. Well, let me get you specifically on the record on, on this Ukrainian scandal. Donald Trump asking the leader of Ukraine to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. Yeah, I, in my years working for six administrations, six presidents, I've never heard of anything remotely connected to something like this. Seeking information from a foreign leader for personal political gain on the part of a president of the United States. And then holding up by his own admission, military assistance, needed military assistance to Ukraine that had already been approved and appropriated by Congress. So, although you know the, the words quid pro quo were not in that conversation, it was that we quite know clear. of. I mean, that's their version of the notes. But, yes. but he did say, "I need a favor, though." I'm not sure how much. I mean, I, I'm not sure what else. It was quite obvious to everybody, including the people on that phone call, including President uh, Zelensky, what it was that Donald Trump was seeking. Do you think it's a coincidence that Russia stood to benefit by withholding military aid to Ukraine? I don't know. I, I am still very, very puzzled and troubled by Donald Trump's um, actions vis-a-vis -vis Russia. It's, it's just something that just makes me uh, very much wonder what is at the root of some of his actions and decisions. So they're on the same page, though, with taking the whole thing not so seriously, making a joke of election meddling. Here's Putin today and Donald Trump on the same topic. Is Russia, as Robert Miller alleged, attempting to influence the 2020 elections in the United States. I'll tell you in a secret. Yes, we will definitely intervene. It's a secret so that everybody can laugh and uh, so we we'll go big. But don't tell anyone, please. Please don't tell anyone. So this attack on the American democracy that my former colleague uh, Michael Hayden described as a political 9-11, the unanimous judgment of the intelligence community was that Russia attacked our 
democracy. Um, Robert Mueller testified in his uh, July 24th testimony, July 23rd testimony, that they were at it as we sit here. A giant joke, Putin and Trump. It's not a laughing matter. It's a very, very serious matter. Russia did interfere, continues to interfere. And the fact that Donald Trump and Putin can make jokes about this, I think just shows how um, in, unable Donald Trump is to defend this country's uh, national security. And it's something that I think all Americans should be outraged over. You know, and if you think about some of the high-level departures, John Bolton gave a speech last week and, and sort of voiced some of his disagreements at a policy level with Donald Trump about disengagement on, on Iran, on North Korea. I think North Korea has since um, launched more missiles on, on this, this sort of emboldening of Putin to, to treat the entire uh, issue of election meddling as a, as a joke. Do you think that puts some steel in the spine of former security officials to come out? I certainly hope so. I hope that John Bolton and others, who I do, even though I disagree with them from a policy perspective, I think they are very concerned about the national security of this country. And they have seen up close and personal what Donald Trump has done to it. So I do hope that more are, gonna, are going to speak out because clearly Donald Trump is unable to protect the, the rights and the liberties and freedoms of, of this country. You know, Lemire, you, Jonathan Lemire, you asked the question in Helsinki that, that sort of, you know, I think of it as, as a soda that, that you shake and you open and, and it's still spilling out. All of his utterances that are so exculpatory of Vladimir Putin, he can't stop himself. No. I mean, his relationship with Putin remains, as the director said, you know, one of great scrutiny. He has never, never, to my knowledge, said anything negative about him, either before uh, while he was still a candidate and certainly taking office. And the Russia policy, though there are parts of the administration and, and the federal government that has been tough on Russia, the president never has. And again, this was, he has said openly, you know, he asked Russia to hack Hillary Clinton's emails. He said in that interview with George Stephanopoulos that he would accept, you know, foreign interference mm -hmm. in the next election. The day after Robert Mueller testified is when he went to the Ukrainian president mm. and offered this deal. This is something that he does not think is out of bounds. And it's beyond just investigating the investigators. It's sort of reverse engineering of the Mueller probe. That's what Barr is doing right now. And they've talked to leaders in Australia and the United Kingdom and other places. That in itself on this sort of try to, to try to explain away the witch hunt, to explain away the Russian interference because the president can't handle the fact that people think that he was elected illegitimately. That it's not just that, looking backwards, it's looking forwards. He's saying that you can do it again next time around. He'd be open there for the help in 2020. And I think there are a lot of people in the Washington establishment who are, who, are, who are very unnerved by this. The question is, what can they do about it? Certainly no one has been able to tell the president to stop his behavior. And David Jolly, there was a report late Friday night in the Washington Post that in that now infamous meeting between Donald Trump and the two Russian diplomats who hadn't been in the Oval Office for, for many years of the Obama presidency, uh, Kislyak and Lavrov, he said to them that, that, that he wasn't bothered by election meddling. And he wasn't because he saw himself as the beneficiary of it. And 15 intel agencies or 16 in the United States have concluded that Russia interfered and the purpose was to benefit Donald Trump. And so he sees Russia as his greatest ally going into 2020, and he welcomes their interference. I, Nicole, if I could just revisit very briefly your conversation with Mr. Brennan there, because I, I think it's important we contextualize the president's behavior on the phone call with the leader of the Ukraine. The question of whether or not a, a quid pro quo existed is important, and I think ultimately we will see that it did. The questions around Hunter Biden are important, and we should talk about those, but both are Ill, Ill, irrelevant to the president president's impeachable behavior. Whether there was aid on the table or not, Donald Trump used the office of the presidency to ask a foreign leader to reopen an investigation for the singular purpose of benefiting Donald Trump politically in the United States. That in and of itself is impeachable behavior. And, and Donald Trump and Republican surrogates will say, what about quid pro quo? What about Hunter Biden? We must not take the bait, and frankly, Democrats on the Hill cannot take the bait to distract from the impeachable behavior, which was very plain. Donald Trump asked the Ukraine to interfere by providing disinformation that would affect voters' information when they went to the ballot box in the United States in 2020. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.